What's going on, Troopers? CT3939 here. And I was watching New Hope and just got smoked with motivation, but also just creative energy that I have to share with you right now. Because A New Hope literally is a perfect example, obviously, of the hero's journey, but it matches step by step a fitness journey, a weight loss journey. If you're starting a business, it literally matches anything where you have to face challenges grow, evolve, and become another person with a new identity. And so I actually pulled together something that I want to share with you that walks you through step by step. So if you're on, let's just use a weight loss journey for this example. If you are in the middle of a weight loss journey, or you've gone on a weight loss journey, and you've lost 50 pounds, 20 pounds, whatever, or you are thinking about maybe starting one, this is going to show you step by step how you are literally Luke Skywalker throughout the entire process. And honestly, it'll probably make the journey, I wouldn't say easier, but it'll help you understand where you're at in the journey so you don't feel like you're lost or you're doing something wrong. You'll be able to say like, oh, cool. I know where I'm at. I'm in the belly of the beast. And so let's dive into it because I think this is one of the coolest things that I've kind of just realized working with 400 plus individuals one-on-one, doing different fitness goals and challenges myself. When I look back at when I ran a sub three-hour marathon, like, it was almost the exact version of this from a hero's journey standpoint. And so I'm going to pull up the slides and just walk you through it. But let's go in. Da, 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 da. All right, cool. So we got it here. Hero's journey processing. And the first thing that I wanted to show is the framework. So there's three stages in the hero's journey. And the first one is going to be the call to adventure. And so that is when you are made aware of a new change, a new challenge to lose weight and go on a journey. And there's a few stages in there. And so you are going on the quest. You're meeting the mentor. That's your Obi-Wan Kenobi. Then there's the initiation. You're going to face trials as you work towards victory on your quest. And then there's the return. That's coming out on the other side, a changed person. So like I said, a fitness journey literally is a hero's journey. And so let's start off in the ordinary world. Right. So you're probably just sitting here watching YouTube and it's just been an ordinary day, an average day. And you're just trying to kill some time. And that is exactly like what we see in A New Hope. Luke's just sitting there. His uncle wants him to go and do some chores. He wants to go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. It's just an average, ordinary day. They don't realize that their lives are about to change forever. Aunt Brew and Uncle Owen don't realize that they're about to get smoked like barbecue. And Luke doesn't realize that he's about to meet his guide. But that is very much like a weight loss journey. You're eating how you normally eat. Maybe you're working out. Maybe you're not. And you're just not even aware of the change that is about to happen for you or the opportunity to make a change. And that's where the call to adventure comes in. That is the help me one, help me Obi-Wan Kenobi. You are my only hope. That is where you are now aware, oh, there's this really cool fitness program, or there's this really cool opportunity that I haven't tried, that I haven't seen, or maybe you're just made aware of a new desire to lose weight. Uh, my home with a couple of you right now, maybe your kids rub your belly uh, for good luck, or you go sit on a plane and that belt loop is a little bit tighter, or you look down and where did my toes go? That belt loop no longer works the way that it did. Last year's dress shirts aren't fitting like they used to. There's that little moment where, mm, I need to go on a journey. I need to go and lose some weight. And so that is your call to adventure, call to go and make a change. But here's what most people end up doing. They refuse the call. They say, I don't have time. Seems kind of hard. I can't because it's a really, you know, challenging time of year for work or I can I don't have the money to get a gym membership and you just you just come up with excuses you're literally like Luke Skywalker saying oh I I can't go with you to Alderaan I can't go and save the galaxy I, I hate the empire but there's nothing I can do about it that's you and I I say this with love but you sound like a little whiny Luke Skywalker when you're just making up excuses as to why you can't go and do something that will literally change your life. You'll go from Luke, the moisture farmer to Luke, the great Jedi Knight. And that is inside of you right now. And I'm getting fired up because I want this for you so bad, but you can't, I can't want it more than you. You got to want it more. So anyway, you've got 
the mentors made themselves available, right? You got Obi-Wan Kenobi. Maybe you've got a coach. Maybe you got someone you follow on YouTube and they're this person that's kind of inspiring you to make a change. But every time you go and make a change, oh, I don't have enough experience. I don't, I don't know my way around the gym or I don't know, you know, what to eat. It's just making up reasons why you can't go on this challenge. And so, all right, here we go. So now we get into the mentor. You found your guide, someone who can show you the ways of fitness and nutrition. Maybe not the force. Maybe you're not a Jedi, but you're going to learn the ways of fitness and nutrition. And you've met your Obi-Wan. And then, and this is getting into phase two, you've got to cross the threshold. You got to get physically, mentally, and for a lot of people, financially invested. You got skin in the game, I think is the most underrated thing in making a change. Because if you are given a car at 16, you will not treat it as well as if you save up and slave for four summers to buy that car at 16, right? People who pay, pay attention. And so I'm just saying this all because if you really want to cross that threshold, put some money down and invest in yourself. And that is going to enable you to literally cross that threshold. In Star Wars, Luke makes every excuse in the book. And then he goes back home and then boom. Aunt Bacon, Uncle Owen, right? They're all cooked to a crisp and he literally can't go back. It is now so clear and so apparent that the Empire is hunting him. He's hunting, the Empire's hunting the droids. And you might run into a situation where, right, for, for years, for months, whatever, you say, I'll start next year. I'll start next week. I'll, I'll start Monday, whatever. You just kick the can, kick the can, kick the can. And then all of a sudden your wife, your girlfriend's like, hey, if you don't make a change, like I don't know what what's going to happen and, and you kind of get hit in the face where it's like oh like this needs to happen now your doctor gives you a prescription says hey if you don't lose weight you might not be here in three to four years you're at risk for a heart attack you've got high blood pressure you've got diabetes yet you can't even walk up the stairs with your four-year-old like that's the moment when you're like okay cool I, like i literally can't go back i need to make a change now you've crossed the threshold in that hero's journey in your hero's journey and it's an exciting point because now you get to go to the Moss Eisley Cantina and find your enemies and your allies. And you're going to be faced with new tests right away. Luke goes into the Moss Eisley Cantina. And what is he met with? He's met with uh, Dr. Evazon. And, you know, these guys are trying to start something. And he's just this scared little kid inside of a big giant cantina. Luckily, he's got his mentor to save him. But right away on your fitness journey, you're going to run into resistance you're going to run into people that are not wanting you to change and grow because that illuminates that they aren't changing and growing and anytime you go and try to move out of the tribe the tribe's going to do everything possible to make you feel like an outcast and so in that cantina luke meets han solo he meets chewbacca and so you're going to meet friends on your journey you're going to go to the gym and be like hey what's up you know we want to work out together will you spot me you'll find people at work you'll find people Throughout your life, maybe relatives, friends that you haven't seen in a while, where all of a sudden you're on this journey, you're starting to make changes, maybe you share it on social media, and all of a sudden you're starting to connect, you've got a different vibration about you, and so you connect with different people, but now all of a sudden you start to clash with other people because they want you to be their drinking buddy, they want you to go and get pizza for the fourth time this week, and as soon as you say, oh no, I'm going to start to make a change, their tune changes, and who you thought was a friend was just someone who is more of just a bar, a bar partner. <laughs> as opposed to someone who wants the best for you. One of the best ways to tell if you got a really good friend is if you want to go and pursue growth, they should amplify that. If they try and sabotage you, it's a big red, big red flag. Can you imagine if Luke and, and Obi-Wan Kenobi are like, hey, we want to go to Alderaan. Uh, obviously, they, they don't say specifically what they're doing, but Han and, and Chewie were like, yeah, absolutely, we'll take you there. Psych, let's like tell the Empire that they're like, whatever. Your true friends are going to be the ones that help you on your journey. The enemies are going to be the ones that are slowing you down on that journey. They're going to be the ones making you feel bad about eating healthy. They're going to be the ones that are saying that you're not going to make it, whatever it is. Eventually, though, you keep going and you get to that innermost cave. And this is my favorite part because it's actually illustrated really well in Empire Strikes Back, where Luke goes into the cave on Dagobah has that battle with Darth Vader and realizes that the dark side that he is fighting is actually himself. And I think that's one of the most powerful ways to interpret this is the reason you're not where you want to be 
isn't the government, isn't your genetics, isn't your uncle or your aunts or your dogs or your kids or whatever. It's you. And in that innermost cave, you have to go and dig down deep inside and recognize that you're the one sabotaging yourself. It's your beliefs, your values. You're the one that's got the fast fork. You don't have a slow metabolism. You just got a fast fork. And it's in that movie, in the in A New Hope, where they go into the Death Star. And that is where, obviously, they're going deep into the enemy's um, location. I wish I had a better term for that. But this is where you dig in and you find that, you know, you're going into the deep inner working core of you. And this is the most challenging part. This is the part where most people give up and quit because it's much easier to play victim and blame everyone else than it is to go into the belly of the beast, go into the Death Star, go into the inner workings of your mind to start to make that identity shift. So then you get to the ordeal. And from a weight loss standpoint, you know, as you approach your goals, you're going to run into unexpected setbacks. And what you thought was either wrong or misinterpreted is involved, evolved into something far more difficult uh, of a conflict than you imagine. And so, you know, as you lose weight, you're going to maybe lose 10 pounds right away. And then you're like, oh man, like I can't get away with the same habits or the same beliefs that I had previously. And this is where the initial battle happens. So a really, a really tactical example of this is maybe you stress eat and you can lose weight when it's convenient, but all of a sudden you run into a stressful situation. You're like, oh, this is harder than I thought. I Maybe I don't know nutrition as well as I thought I did because as soon as things get chaotic, I default back to my base operating system. My base operating system hasn't changed. And right in Star Wars, you have the ordeal of Obi-Wan Kenobi Darth Vader fighting. And this is the moment when Luke loses his mentor. And that's a big moment where all of a sudden Luke's like, wow, I'm on my own. And this happens in a weight loss journey where you're going to get to a point to where you're like, oh man, like maybe I don't have as big of a handle on this as I thought I did. But if you press on, if you keep learning, if you trust the path that you are on, you will get to a point to where you get the reward and you seize the sword. And you're going to come out on the other side of your ordeal or multiple ordeals with a new lesson or a new skill set. Think about this as your fitness loot where you, you crank open the chest and bam, I've got this new skill set. I used to really struggle with not being able to get enough protein, but now I've got my this hidden snack that I wasn't aware of until I went through this ordeal. Or now you know some really good recipes that you can make. Or now you know different mindset tricks that you can apply when you find yourself in those really stressful situations. And so you learn those little bits that you dig out in your innermost cave when you dig deep and figure out, okay, cool, this is a new skill set. This is something that I can learn. And you're going to need that for overcoming the final boss that's always brought you down because there is one final step and that's the road back. So they escape the Death Star in A New Hope and then they got to go back and blow it up, right? One final boss, one final slaying of the giant. And so you might be able to say, okay, cool. I learned how to not stress eat, but there's a big specific moment. Maybe it's Thanksgiving with your family. Maybe it's a wedding. Maybe it's being able to confront a certain person where you got to be able to go back and everything that you've learned, all the changes that you've made, this identity shift that you have made, you've got to go and now apply that to the biggest situation. And again, a lot of times it's a person. A lot of times it's a situation. For uh, I know for me, a lot of times like looking back social anxiety and sitting at like a wedding and, and needing to be by the food and constantly eating was something that I had to really work out of because I would have rather sat there and just eat than have to go and interact with people that I didn't know. This is when my wife and I first started dating. I was meeting felt like hundreds of people at these weddings and she was like, hey, you got to go and, and get away from the food table and, and stop just sitting there. But looking back, like that was such a social anxiety, nervous thing. If I only had, you know, one or two people that I could talk to, I would talk to them and then I would go sit like I can picture this in my head right now uh, in Palm Springs. I just sat there and just ate pizza after pizza after pizza because I didn't want to have to go and face what I had to face. And that's a really good example of having to go and then, you know, in the future, I've gone to weddings and, and done much better. But this is a really good example of that road back. So you take all the skill sets, all the things you've learned, all of that growth, 
and you blow up the Death Star. You actually overcome the biggest hurdle. This is a really good example of this. You might have never broken past a certain weight threshold. Every single time you went and hit 200, 220, 250, 300. And as soon as you broke maybe and, and hit that, boom, you rescinded all the way back to gaining the weight back. Everyone's got that weight or what they deem as like their, their, their goal weight or whatever. That could very easily be something where you've got to break through that and you've never broken through that before. And it takes utilizing the sword that you learned on your hero's journey and then coming out on the other side with the resurrection. You get the medal, right? And if you got a dog named Chewbacca, hopefully that dog gets a medal as well. But this is the part where you actually come out on the other side. You're like, wow, like I've actually learned, I've grown, I've completed my hero's journey. I've broken through my lowest all-time weight and I'm still continuing to go. This is much more of a lifestyle change. And that is a very good place to be because now you can return back. And this is where you come home from the holidays. You see old friends. They'll be like, man, you've changed. And they'll say, you know, how did you do it? And then you share with them what you've learned and how you've made an identity identity shift. You've tapped into your alter ego. Luke was a moisture farmer. Now he's a Jedi. He becomes a Jedi Knight. He becomes a Jedi Master. And there, there's a version of you right now that is that Jedi Master. But right now you're letting the dark side version of you win. When there's a light side version of you that wants to emerge. That's why you've watched this video 16 minutes in. Because there's a part of you that desperately wants to come out on the other side of that hero's journey. And so in this video here that I'm actually going to uh, would recommend for you to watch, I'll walk you through how you can make some of those identity shifts and how to kind of create your alter ego. That's why this entire channel exists. Because two years ago, I was in a really dark place and I would put on my 501st helmet, the one you see right behind me, right here. I would put this helmet on and I'd say, what would Captain Rex do? And it gave me a visual representation of the character traits that were already inside of me that I needed to emanate, that I needed to show for my wife, for myself. And that got me out of, you know, I'll, I'll share that in another video, but that got me out of a dark place. And then all of a sudden it was, all right, I'm CT3939. What would CT3939 do if he wanted to have almost like a podcast style message where he's sharing it with all the troopers in the Galactic Republic. And instead of it being actual clone troopers, it's actual people. And I'm sharing these messages of exercise, nutrition, personal development, and tying it back to the stories of Star Wars. Yeah, that's Paul, but that's also CT3939. It's like Batman and Bruce Wayne. It's like Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And if you think I'm crazy, you have Sasha Fierce and you have Beyonce, you have the Black Mamba, you have Kobe Bryant, you have Eminem, you have Marshall Mathers, you got Jay-Z. Like, There's so many artists. Uh, if you look at any actors, they'll method act. They will literally tap into the mindset of the character that they are creating. And so this video that I want you to watch walks you through how you can create and tap into your alter ego. And so when you see me saying, you know, for the Republic or let's get fit for the Republic, that republic is also, in a way, an alter ego. The republic is your country. The republic is your family. The republic is your community. If you're a firefighter, EMT, people need you to be your best. And so you got to tap into the hero inside of you and unlock whatever you need from a motivation standpoint so you can become Luke Skywalker, the Jedi Master, and not Luke Skywalker, the moisture farmer. And that's what it's all about. It's the hero's journey. So... Watch that video and drop any comments or questions down below.